Jesus, he heals all my diseases. Wherever God's people are found, wherever prayer does abound, the glory of the Lord will shine upon us. We can be free and feel his power, so lift your hands in this hour. Let God's healing power come upon you. Praise the Lord. Well, it's Thursday night Bible study time. Let's come together, you and I, and come into agreement and believe God for a, a good time tonight in the Lord. Let's pray and ask God's blessing. Father, we just thank you tonight for the privilege of studying your word and reading your word and absorbing and digesting your word. I pray, God, that you'll make it alive in our hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. I want to speak to you something the Lord gave me this week that I think is going to help us to be more effective. You know, uh, we want our lives to count. We want the things that we do for God to not be in vain. We don't want to get to the end of the road of our Christian life and hear that, you know, a big thumbs down from God. We want God to reward us. We want to be know that our lives were effective while we were here on this earth. And I read a verse of Scripture in 1 Timothy 2.8 for the reading tonight. And uh, it's just a brief, he briefly alludes to this, but the Lord really spoke it to my heart. Paul is addressing Timothy and he says, I desire, therefore, that, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. And he's talking about men praying everywhere, lifting up holy hands, but then he puts two conditions on it. And what are those conditions? Without wrath and doubting. And so I want to propose to you tonight that if you have either one of those two, it'll be deadly against your prayer. It'll be a killer. It'll, it'll kill the effectiveness of our prayer. And we certainly don't want that. We want God to hear, to recognize our voice, and to respond to our, our pleading to him. And so we think about this tonight, and we, we look at this, and we want to delve in a little bit to what wrath and doubting is, because obviously these two things will kill our prayer, kill its effectiveness. Amen. The first one is uh, wrath. He said, lift up holy hands without wrath. What is wrath? Wrath is unforgiveness. Wrath is anger. The wrath of man works not the righteousness of God. When people get upset and angry, it never works the righteousness of God. We want to not only pray, but to make our petitions so that they are effective and powerful. And one of them is to be sure that we release the anger that's in our lives so that our prayers can be heard. Matthew 5, 23 talks about this. Jesus said, if your brother has something against you, leave the altar, go to your brother, First be reconciled to your brother, then come to the altar and offer your gift. So in other words, you're down there at the altar, you're ready to pray, but you remember that your brother has something against you. And notice it didn't say that you have something against your brother. It said your brother has something against you. So there's somebody that's transgressed or verbally abuse somebody and it's come against you your brother is offended with you he said leave the prayer go out of the church go find your brother and be reconciled to your brother in other words say to him i i know i hurt you i'm sorry please forgive me you said but what if i wasn't guilty you still go to them and say i feel bad about this I wish it hadn't happened. I want to bury the hatchet. I want you to forgive me, please. If you do your part, God will do his part and keep the record of you being the peacemaker. What, are, what does he say? Blessed are the peacemakers. 
They're going to inherit the earth. And we have to be people who are without offense. When you have offense in your heart, you're hard-edged, you're critical of people, you, you, you speak disparagingly of other people, all of this adds up to an attitude of life that God will not accept if you come and pray. God says, get this anger out of your life. Go to your brother, make it right with him. Even if he says, no, I don't, I don't accept your apology, you're clear with him then, and God will accept your petition. Hallelujah. In the next verse, he even says, agree with your adversary, lest your adversary come and get you and put you in the jail. In other words, do everything within your life to live peaceably with all men, as Paul said. Amen. Forgive, and God will always forgive you. Have your conscience to be clean and clear when you come to the Lord in prayer. If there's something bothering your conscience, it's something that's a, it's a blockage between you and God. Make sure that you take care of business in that area. And the Lord will, no doubt, always, always bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the second one he said that kills prayer is not only wrath, but doubting. And we all know what it is to doubt. We've all had to deal with that in our walk of faith because we don't live by sight. We live by faith as people of God. We don't have a holy relic, a holy anything that we can visib visibly look at that makes it what we can lay our hopes on. It's all by faith. And so doubting is a natural part of who we are as fallen people. And we have to purposely go after it, destroy it, move it out of our lives, and claim the peace of God for our life. James 1.6 says, Ask in faith no doubting, for he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, driven, tossed by the wind. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord, for double-minded people are unstable in all their ways. Hallelujah. So when you go to the Lord, make sure you're free from wrath and make sure that you believe that who you're praying to is hearing and is going to answer. Be very careful that you don't get double-minded that you pray and throw up a prayer and then go out and speak against what you were praying about. Why would God answer that? Matthew 21, 21. If you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to this fig tree as Jesus had cursed it the day before, but he said, also you will say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and it will be done. For whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. What a powerful statement that is. If you pray in faith, believing, once you release that prayer into the hands of God, don't ever doubt it. Stand on it. Believe it. Confess it. Say, I know God's working. Well, have you seen the answer? No, but I put it in God's hands and God heard it and God's taking care of business. And I have found through serving God a long time that God very seldom ever answers prayer when I wanted him to, how I wanted him to, what I expected out of him. He always has very diverse and, and surprising things that he does in our life, but he always comes through. And you have to know that. I remember when I was young in the ministry and I lived back in Oklahoma and my wife and I had had a new house built and and it was in a floodplain, a hundred-year floodplain. And I remember that they were having a hundred-year flood. And I remember the water, uh, our house was built up uh, off the ground, but the water started coming up. And it got up to over two feet in our garage and all around our house. And it just looked like it was just going to come right in the house and destroy everything. I remember how I prayed, prayed, prayed that night. I prayed for hours, and I prayed against that rain and that water. I walked out there and put my hands over it and commanded it to go down. And, and uh, you know, I, I did everything I could. I was hoarse by the time I got through praying that night. I had prayed so much. 
And I went to sleep in faith believing. And the next morning I got up and it hadn't gone down. It hadn't receded. I'd spoken these words of faith over it and it hadn't. In fact, it had come up to where it was about six inches from coming in the door of our house and up under the floor of our house. And I remember how that I was so disillusioned. It took me weeks, if not months, to get over that because God didn't do what I said. He said, if you have faith and you believe, it will be done. Finally, one day, I, I was having a pity party and I was talking to God and God spoke to my heart and said, son, I answered your prayer. You prayed that the water wouldn't get in your house. Did any of it get in your house? I said, no. I said, but I prayed that you would make it go down and it would recede by morning. He said, but I kept my word. I did what you asked. I didn't do it like you wanted it. I let it get closer than you wanted it to be. But I came through, didn't I? Yes, Lord. And we got to get to a place where we don't get hung up. When we pray, we believe, we stand on the word and the promise of God. We know he's able. We know he can. We know he will. We speak faith. But ultimately, we put it in his hands. Lord, if you want to do this a different way, it's up to you. Believe me, he'll do it a different way. Because God loves faith. And he always moves in a way that you're not expecting. He'll always check us out and test our faith. And so I challenge you to not let instances in the past where you've prayed and things didn't go, come like you thought they were. You didn't get the expected result. Don't let that be a roadblock to your faith. Don't let the devil use that as leverage against your soul. Cast out the unbelief. Amen. What did the Hebrew boys say? Our God is able. Our God will deliver us from this furnace. And then they gave the third response. But if he doesn't, know this. We're not going to bend or bow to your shrine. We'd rather be dead in your furnace than alive in Babylon walking around and be disloyal to our God. And that's ultimately where our faith has to take us. Lord, I'm believing for this outcome. I'm believing for this miracle. But even if I don't get it, my faith is unshakable in you. You will do what's right with this. Every time, if I don't doubt and have unbelief. Doubt is such a wicked thing. It's such a terrible thing. Telling God you don't believe him. You don't appreciate him. You don't believe that he'll do the right thing. He does what's right every time, all the time. Hallelujah. Matthew 14, 31. Jesus said to Peter when he fell from walking on the water, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Oh, you of little faith. The wind was blowing. Peter walked on the water. But then he saw the wind blowing and he looked down at the waves and he began to sink. And he cried out and the Lord immediately picked him up. But he asked him, little faith, why did you doubt? Why did he go down? He doubted. Why are our prayers not answered? We doubt. I pray God will help us. We've got to be better than that. We've got to do better than that. We've got to know better than that. We've got to stand on his word. Hallelujah. I know a pastor, a friend of mine from Oklahoma years ago, he and his church had a precious man in their church that had been there for many years, one of the stalwarts of the church, founding members, and he got cancer. And they prayed for him and prayed for him and prayed for him and prayed for him over a process of about two years. He didn't get healed, and he passed away. They had his funeral in the church, but he said you could just feel that the faith of the people had fallen. The very next Sunday, there was a, a man that was rolled in a wheelchair in his church down to the front, and the man was blind. And my pastor friend preached his message. In the conclusion of his message, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, pray for that blind man. 
And he said, well, he's a visitor, Lord. I, I don't even know who he is. The Lord said, I brought him here for a reason. Pray for him. They rolled him up. He found out his name, laid hands on that man, and they, and they prayed, and immediately his eyes were opened. And he took his thumbs off of the man's eyes, and he said, can you see anything? And the man said, I see you. Completely, 100% restored in sight. And he said the church just erupted in praise to God. Why did God do that? Because God had another plan regarding this elder. He was going to take him home. But he also restored the faith of the people in God by doing the unexpected. Some of these things we will never know the answer to till we get to the other side. But your faith is not built on the outcome. Your faith is built on God himself. That he loves us more than we could ever love him back. He proved it with giving of his son. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? Amen. Father, I ask you tonight to take swift wing and move in the hearts of your people. God, give us faith irrespective of the outcome. Give us faith in who you are and what your word says and help us stand strong in the name of Jesus. Give us what we need, God, so we can be at peace and be victorious. For without faith, we have no peace. We have no rest in you. But when we believe and we trust, we lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting. We will always enjoy the presence and the power of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask God to bless you tonight and strengthen you. Amen and amen. I'll see you Sunday morning.